we begin with a blank slate, I've created a new plugin with a name of Movies Post Type. So the first step is to register that custom post type, and that's very easy. But there's one thing you need to be aware of is you cannot do this before the init action. So we'll do that right now. Add action, init, and again, we'll stick with 5.3 and pass an anonymous function. And we're gonna be working with a class because I find it's a little bit easier to organize. So we'll call this class, to make sure it doesn't clash, I'll prefix my initials as always, and we'll say JW Movies Post Type. So let's go ahead and create that class right now and create the standard constructor method that'll run in immediately when this class is instantiated. So I'll save that and come back to our WordPress dashboard, refresh the page, and sure enough, this is available to us activate it, and now we're set to get started. So the first thing we'll do here is register that custom post type, and we'll store that within its own method, and we'll call it register post type. Create that function now. To register a post type takes a massive array, but don't let this confuse you. Mostly you're just setting your configuration options. It's really not that much work, but ultimately we're going to be calling a function called register post type. This function will accept two parameters. The first one is going to be, what is the name of the post? So for example, within WordPress, we have a post type of post, we have pages, we have attachments. In our case, we're gonna call ours, and it's generally a good practice to prefix some initial that references your plugin. This will make sure that it doesn't clash if you use something like movie. So we'll call it JW. And the second parameter is going to be what are the arguments that will be associated with this post type. We'll create that now and we'll call it args. So args will be equal to an array and this is where we pass in everything that we need to configure. And let's take a look at all of our arguments that are available. So the first one is a label, a plural descriptive name for the post type marked. Now we'll be using this form right here, labels, and this is where we can specify essentially what the text says. If that's confusing, just stick with me and you'll understand it shortly. Labels, and here we need to pass in an array. And what will be the name of our custom post type as it's shown within the dashboard? And this is gonna be called movies. The next one is going to be the singular name. All of these parameters are needed in order to display the text correctly. It needs to know what is the singular version of movies. That'll be movie. Next, what is the text that should display when having a button to add a new movie item? Add new movie. We'll do a couple more. The same thing for add new item. This is mostly the same thing. And now I will paste in the rest to save some time. And there we are. So you see mostly when you're editing an item, what should that text say? Edit item. When you're adding a one, add new item. So what you'll find is, again, you'll save this to perhaps your code snippet toolbox so that you can paste this in and you don't have to write it over and over because it is quite a bit of options. The next option will be query bar. And this is going to be how we query this custom post type. For example, within your theme, if you want to query all of the posts that are in this type, what would you use as that query var? And we'll call it movies. Next, we're going to pass in a rewrite option. And this gives us the ability to pass an array that specifies the URL structure. So we'll do slug. And this will be the slug that leads up to the post item. And we'll set that to movie slash. And we'll keep it like so for the rewrite option. And next, we need to specify whether this custom post type should be visual to the WordPress backend. And we use the keyword public there. And we're going to set that to true. So now, let's see what happens when we refresh our dashboard. Sure enough, with very little effort, we now have a new movies section. If I click on movies, you can notice that we have this generated panel. And notice these sections, add new movie, no movies found. All of this text is coming from the labels, as you can see right here. If I added some gibberish right here, you'll see that take effect, as you can see like so. These are simple labels. Don't let that confuse you. In the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to specify where within the sidebar this movies panel should show up, and we're also going to set a custom icon.